Welcome to a Beyond the Trailer special report. And you thought it was just a regular old Tuesday. Well, surprise, it's Star Wars Day come early, as the full cast, or the full main cast, has just been announced by J.J. Abrams and company. And I have to say, I think they did a really nice job with this announcement. Uh, I love the black and white photo of the first cast table read they uh, posted, uh, not only because uh, it's great to always see behind the scenes on a big movie like this and to see everyone taking it so seriously, uh, but I just also kind of like the fact that it's in black and white. And I don't know if it's intentional or not, but the photo just fits so perfectly with the old black and white production stills we've seen from the original trilogy. So I think that it seems very obvious to me, at least, that J.J. Abrams is very aware of the legacy he's dealing with here uh, and wanting to build on that instead of knock it all down and build his own version. So I really like that kind of sense of nostalgia and that they're adding to film history. So I think that's great. And I think you can kind of see that with the casting choices they've made here. Uh, everyone here is a very well-received actor, at least those that we know about. There's a wild card in here, the, uh, the lone female casting, Daisy Ridley, but we'll get to that in a moment. The other thing that I wanted to say first, though, before we start, is I actually really like announcing the cast in one fell swoop. We always have casting announcements kind of trickle in. Uh, we've been hearing the Justice League very slowly but surely be cast these days. Uh, that's the most recent kind of uh, casting news, uh, making headlines. Uh, but there's something to be said for just this, you know, uh, just this unveiling. And the fact also they were able to keep it a secret. I mean, there were some names here we knew about, uh, but there are still some genuine surprises, uh, which I think is very exciting. It really does make it a special day. All right, so let's go through the new cast members. Now, of course, they're going, they said they're going to be having Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill, Anthony Daniels, Peter Mayhew, and Kenny Baker from the original trilogy are all returning. And you can see some of them. I think they're probably all in that photo, but that photo, for its beauty and nostalgia, actually doesn't have a lot of detail. I think the person who benefits the most from that photo is actually Adam Driver, because you can just really see him well. Uh, and I'm sure that everybody with their back to camera was like, I didn't know this was for posterity's sake. Damn. But anyway, those people are all returning. So who will be joining them? It's a very large cast, and I think this is very exciting that, uh, that that's the, the case. You know, you don't have just like one or two people that are going to join our originals. It very much does seem they're going to be passing the baton to a new generation. Uh, so let's go. I'm actually not going to list them alphabetically. I'm going to list them the way that the press release did so, and I think that could be potentially very telling. Uh, now, according to Twitter, last I checked, the people who were trending, though, were John Boyega, Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver. So that's the, that's uh, right away. That's a snapshot who has, who has captured the public's attention right out of the gate. We'll see how things continue once you see who they're playing, costumes, uh, lighting, if they're playing a human character or doing a voice. So a lot of question marks there with Andy Serkis. Some people seem to assume that he's going to actually be playing himself. I wouldn't be so sure. He is the master of motion capture acting. Uh, he might be called upon to do that again. Uh, and so, so let's start out with the first person listed, and that is John, uh, John Boyega. Uh, I think c congratulations to him. This is someone we've been hearing a lot about, obviously, as I just talked about this morning. Uh, he seemed to be uh, in the role because uh, Ray Fisher had jumped over to Justice League. But uh, this is huge news for Boyega. And the fact that his name goes first leads me to believe he might very well be our hero. Now, right there. That's a huge accomplishment uh, for just film in general. That you you would have uh, an African American, well, actually in this case, a UK actor, an African actor, uh, in a lead role in a big blockbuster like this. We have never seen this. Will Smith has headed up some films. We're talking about a franchise property uh, that you know has a lot of merchandising tied in. There's a lot at stake here. Will Smith is often the master of his own fate, and he stars in those movies because he puts them together. Uh, and they're you know again, it's a Will Smith vehicle. This you know. This is a Star Wars film. So the fact that John Boyega is front and center, as I said when, a couple weeks ago, or maybe even months ago at this point, when it was first announced they were considering uh, casting a black actor in a lead role here, expect DC and Marvel to watch this very closely. And if this does well, uh, it could mean uh, not only a Black Panther film, etc., and all those movies a uh, number of you would like to see, but it could just change the way Hollywood does casting in general. Uh, this is a very diverse cast, as we were speaking about this morning. Uh, and if this works out, this single-handedly could do so much for diversity in Hollywood. Uh, Hollywood hasn't taken much 
note of the Fast and Furious success, despite the diversity there. It's kind of existed in a vacuum. Uh, but for Star Wars to make the, you know, to do something this important, uh, is just it's really huge. It, it's and it's exciting. It's because I think the talent is there as well. This isn't stunt casting. Uh, you know, this isn't like your latest music star. It's not like they, you know, uh, go and find a, like a rapper and be like, it's going to be him. He has so many fan bases. Look at his Twitter following. Although I did follow John Boyega uh, this afternoon when I saw him trending and they were like, do you want to follow John Boyega? And I was like, yes, I do. So congrats to Boyega. And it just also shows you have to really stick stick in there. Not, you know, not give up. He was in Attack the Block uh, a couple of years ago at this point. Uh, a very overlooked film, really well done, great movie. He was very good in it. Uh, it, it, it itself some, uh, was a film, a sci-fi film that pushed the boundaries and played with stereotypes and race, you know, and, and economics as well. It basically was about a bunch of aliens who crash land in uh, a very bad part of uh, London. And so it was just really interesting to see uh, that community deal with aliens and, and a funny, but also as you watch the movie, a very realistic and touching and powerful way. It wasn't just a slapstick comedy. So Boyega, uh, uh, he's poised obviously to be a big star. He has that one great credit to his name. He's apparently also in 24, the new 24 series on Fox, which starts, I believe, May 11th, right? So set your DVRs now. Uh, he's only in four episodes though, so you won't be it's not too much of a commitment on your part. Uh, but I hope that doesn't hurt him at all. But I think that for, for John Boyega, he I think he has just enough of a resume to be a credible choice and to show that he can act, but he's a fresh enough face that Disney and Star Wars can claim him uh, for their own. So very exciting for Boyega. Super exciting. Alright, so he's the first name. Then comes our, our lone female edition. Uh, some people are making a big deal about how they wanted to have, and I'm, I'm a big fan of, you know, obviously women in Hollywood. We talked a lot about that this weekend with the other woman, uh, but I think that this seems fine to me. I mean, I, of course we would like to see, it would be great to see a female Jedi, maybe Daisy Ridley will be a female Jedi. We don't know what her role is yet, uh, but it, you know, I guess it's the classic formula that all the Star Wars movies have, fo uh, have uh, followed. Uh, one female lead, uh, you know, it was uh, Carrie Fisher in the first trilogy, then Natalie Portman, and now Daisy Ridley. So I think there's something to be said for tradition. And, you know, uh, who says that women can't have another great science fiction film all their own somewhere else? Uh, so I'm, I'm not... I mean, again, as I said, it would be great, but I'm not disappointed. I'm not upset about this. I think there's a lot to be excited about here. And not every movie can be everything to everyone. So, But we do have Daisy Ridley here. People are instantly curious as to who she is. She's been, like, in one episode of Mr. Selfridge, apparently. Very, very uh, small background. Now, this morning, there was another actress who had been rumored for this role, Maisie something. I, I accidentally said Maisie Williams, and so many of you have been like, Arya Stark? She would have been great. But uh, not Arya Stark from Game of Thrones. She was never in contention for this role. It was another actress, and it was actually, I believe, uh, another African actress or, or uh, multi-ethnic actress from also from the UK, I believe. Uh, and it's interesting they went with Ridley. Ridley seems to be Caucasian to me. Uh, so uh, maybe I don't know how that factored into their casting decision, but I hope that Ridley does a great job. Uh, so uh, certainly she has a lot of uh, eyes on her. And I think when you even look at her visually, and we don't know anything else about her really, but how she looks, uh, she does kind of fit the mold of, the, of Carrie Fisher and Natalie Portman. There's always been a distinct look that Lucas went for, and Abrams seems to be carrying over with that. So congratulations, Disney Rid Daisy Ridley. You kind of won the movie lottery. But of course, it's not a, a full lottery because she had to audition, and J.J. Uh, Abrams, I don't think, wouldn't have picked her if she'd wasn't able to do a good job. All right, so that's uh, the second name. Then, of course, Adam Driver. He's the only character we really know anything about. He's been tipped to play a villain. I think that's a very exciting choice, you know, Sith Lord. Uh, so I hope they do. I, but I wonder, again, you don't know what makeup, the makeup situation is going to be here. I mean, when you look at something like the Clone Wars, you don't know if these actors are going to look like the way they look. Uh, I mean, the Clone Wars, one, the animated series, and all the animated Star Wars content has gone to great lengths to show diversification in terms of the alien species that are involved. So you don't know exactly what's uh, at play here. And also with today's technology and special effects, these actors could do multiple types of roles. Voiceover, motion capture, you don't know. It could not just be Andy Serkis. So we really don't know what we're dealing with here. And of course, Darth Maul, you know, I mean, it was Ray Park who was not a professional actor. He was a professional stunt and uh, professional fighter, coordinator, and stuff like that. So, you know, he, he wasn't drawing and bringing an audience, but you couldn't really see him either. So we don't know what Adam Driver's character is going to look like. But uh, he has a lot of heat from girls, uh, a lot, very strong fan, fan base. This is also somebody that Warner Brothers wanted very badly. He went over to the, to the force, to the dark side, uh, literally in his case. Um, and so I hope that he's not wasted 
by J.J. Abrams. As I said this morning in Morning Movie News, the only concern I have here is that J.J. Uh, Abrams, I feel, really handicapped Benedict Cumberbatch's movie career, if not outright really destroyed it. I uh, certainly got it off to a very bad start, and I would hate to see anything befell this talented group of actors uh, as well. Uh, Cumberbatch should be like, watch out for J.J. Abrams, he promises you the stars to make you a star, and you just become an annoying factoid about a whitewashed character that everybody knew who it was, despite it trying to be a surprise. Things did not work out for Benedict Cumberbatch, but Adam Driver, uh, let's hope that this is everything that fans like myself of his and Star Wars want it to be. So, very charismatic actor, by the way. Uh, he really pulls focus, so uh, watch out everybody else on screen with him. He, because, uh, you know, male actors in particular, especially with a deep voice being very tall, Adam Driver is just a, a bright, shining star, and it's hard to compete with someone like that on camera, so uh, we'll see how everybody fares opposite him. But you need that kind of inner strength, I think, for your villain. So, and hopefully he'll be an anti-hero or maybe a villain that we kind of root for. I mean, you know what our track record with villains are these days. Loki totally overshadows Thor. So Adam Driver, who actually, when you think about it, maybe might be another Tom Hiddleston. That'd be very exciting. All right, so that's the third name. Then they went on to list Oscar Isaac. Of course, that was the big rumor this morning that I was very excited about. I'm still excited about it. Uh, somebody made an interesting point. I pointed out that Oscar Isaac is Guatemalan, so therefore he's a Latino actor. And someone uh, took offense to that, saying, you know, Latinos are considered white, you know, uh, you shouldn't separate the demographic, uh, you know, if you do it, then Hollywood does it, etc. And I can see the sensitivity there, and I'm sure that when, one day we would love to have race-blind casting or ethnic-blind casting, uh, and it doesn't matter. But the point is, is that Hollywood does break things up into demographics. Because demographics do, I mean, stereotypes work for a reason, and there are demographics for a reason. Certain groups of people go to see certain types of movies. Uh, I still remember to this day covering Wolfman with uh, Benicio Del Toro, and so many people saying they were so proud of Puerto Rico, uh, someone from Puerto Rico, a Puerto Rican, was the Wolfman. And that really propelled a lot of them to go. Obviously not enough to make the movie a success, but still, that was important. And you see movies like End of Watch succeed. So. There is something to be said for bringing in that Latino demographic and, a, you know, a point of pride to seeing them in a movie like this, I'm sure. And I'm sure while Oscar Isaac, you know, at first glance might not seem, oh, stereotypically Latino, he does speak to that demographic, and I think it's important, and I think heritage is important, and I think when you're talking about diversity, it's obviously a very difficult subject matter, uh, but it matters. It matters to the people who don't see it enough in films. It matters to Hollywood when they're trying to bring in the box office, uh, and it clearly matters to moviegoers because it does influence moviegoing decisions. And I'm very curious, by the way, if this is making anybody more excited about Star Wars from that perspective. Now you see how diverse and, you know, multi-ethnic this cast is. Does it make you maybe want to see it? Does Star Wars suddenly take on a new meaning to you uh, beyond just an entertainment value? All right, so Oscar Isaac, I think it's, you know, wow. Talk about a, a great, uh, you know, uh, prize for Inside Lewin Davis. I mean, he didn't really get that much out of the award season. He got some nominations, but to land the uh, a coveted role in Star Wars is quite the coup for him. And uh, it just shows, again, just keep acting, get out there, and if people see your work, obviously J.J. Abrams saw Inside Lewin Davis and said, I like that guy. Let's bring him into Star Wars. So very exciting for him uh, as well. Then Andy Serkis. You know, again, I, I said, some of you are thinking, oh, we'll get to see Andy Serkis in live action. What do you want to bet he's playing like Yoda's son. You know, we talked a lot about this would be the next generation and the children of our original heroes. Well, you know, Yoda is one of those heroes, so you don't know what Yoda's been doing. And also, maybe Yoda is still around. Uh, you just, I mean, because I think puppet work hasn't worked out. They obviously aren't doing puppets anymore like they did in the original trilogy. And then the CGI animation, I think, lost some of the human quality, you know, the, the soul of these characters. You know, I think that, well, it was cool to see Yoda flip around with his little lightsaber and be all adorable, and we saw, finally saw what kind of, like, his feet look like really well. Um, you know, I think Yoda lost a little something in translation. So maybe if they have Andy Serkis come on board and play Yoda, uh, it will just be uh, all the more fascinating. You'll have everything in play together. So he could be his son, he could be Yoda himself, who knows. I'm also very curious as to what this means for Andy Serkis' plans to direct the Jungle Book for Warner Brothers. That was a very big announcement. It was a new phase in his career, something he's been actively working towards behind the scenes with Peter Jackson's help, directing sequences in The Desolation of Smaug. Uh, but of course now he's making a Star Wars movie, and conceivably a whole new trilogy. Uh, but at the same time, I'm sure he isn't required to be on set too much. I mean, this is obviously a very expansive cast, so perhaps he can knock his stuff out, shoot Jungle Book in the middle, and then go back. I'm sure Warner Brothers loves the association with Star Wars. Anything to keep Andy Serkis in the headlines, uh, such as this does. 
So Circus is building quite the motion capture acting empire. Uh, you know, uh, the, the Ape series, uh, the Lord of the Rings, obviously, uh, Hobbit to some degree, and then now obviously Star Wars. And so I really do think, I wouldn't be surprised if he's doing motion capture and uh, motion capture Yoda. That's my bet. All right, so that's the next name. Then this was a very surprising one. This was a true surprise, and I'm probably going to mispronounce his name. Uh, Domino Gleason. Uh, he was in About Time, opposite Rachel McAdams recently. It was a film that I didn't see in theaters, but I rented it, and I actually, re well, you know, I uh, downloaded it on demand, and I actually really enjoyed it. He's quite charming. Uh, I really like his, I liked his performance there a lot. He's also in the upcoming Frank, opposite Michael Fassbender, uh, where he plays the guy with the, the paper mache head that he wants to wear all the time. And, you know, uh, Donald Gleason just has, like, a, a certain, like, very very British UK quality to him that I think really speaks to the original trilogy. You know, of course, these films have been filmed over in the UK. They use, utilize a lot of UK talent in supporting roles. And I think Domhnall Gleeson could be someone really charming. Uh, you know, you might think, who's going to be your Han Solo here? Who's going to be the one the ladies like? Uh, don't be surprised if it's Domhnall Gleeson, unless, of course, he's covered and made to look really gross or something. But if he's playing himself, uh, Domhnall Gleeson definitely has that uh, ideal boyfriend charm about him, and so rent about time. I'm sure it'll shoot up in the in the queues on Netflix and such. Uh, but I think he's a fascinating choice, and I'm very surprised to see him here. And it's so fascinating to see how fast his career has taken off. He, of course, had a very bit small, tiny role in the Harry Potter movies. It's one of the Weasley brothers, but you know he didn't even register to me in those films. I just know him from About Time, uh, and so. But now he's going to register big time. So I think it's interesting the talent that we've all been kind of noticing. J.J. Uh, Abrams has been noticing as well. All right, so that's the uh, the second to last name. Now the last name we have our older actor Max von Sydow, and again this is another case where he didn't win that Oscar when he was nominated in 2012 for Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close. People were surprised that that he might win because he was getting up there, uh, and sometimes the Oscars take that into consideration when give, deciding who to give the Oscar to. Uh, but still, the nomination gives him a ton of credibility. It's only his second, actually. The first was, for, I believe, for a foreign film back in the 80s. Uh, so, you know, you can say Oscar-nominated actor Ma Max von Sydow. He's obviously not above this kind of fare, of course, because he famously did The Exorcist. Uh, but I think the question is, will he be a wise old villain or a wise old hero? He could be going the Emperor route or, of course, uh, Ben Kenobi. We, you're not quite sure. He definitely has, could go either way. Uh, and it's interesting. Again, you're seeing, you know, I, again, just like you have one female character that kind of has this, the Carrie Fisher, Natalie Portman vibe, again, you have someone who has, you know, the Alec Guinness vibe. You, you know, you see J.J. Abrams reaching back into history, seeing what works, trying to give you that Star Wars feel. Not just, well, I played the music over it, and there was a crawling title, and I say it's in Star Wars, and there's a Wookiee. Uh, he's really trying to recreate uh, that, that magic that worked so well in the first three films. And then I think that the second film, to some degree, lost and didn't follow this strategy to some, you know, too much. It had more of a colorfulness, a brightness to it. Um, it was more family-friendly, I guess you could say. And those, those, that, that, those prequels have proven to be quite family-friendly, actually. Uh, that's their saving grace. They did bring a new generation into the fandom. Uh, well, the rest of fandom was left scratching their heads as to how anyone could enjoy it. But I think here you, you see, I think, the, the makings of a darker, more sophisticated film just by the casting alone, because you see really strong actors that do very strong work, very committed to their work. There's almost a theatrical aspect to this casting, uh, and I'm just very, very excited. I think J.J. Abrams is handling everything perfectly so far. Also, I have to give a shout-out to Kathleen Kennedy, his producer, the head of the new Lucasfilm division at Disney, uh, and I think that this is just very exciting. And I think we're all going to wait with uh, holding our breath, wondering, is he going to mess it up? Because I, while I loved the first Star Trek, I had serious problems with the second Star Trek. Serious, fatal flaws with that film. Uh, even beyond the, the, the destruction of Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, he should yell Abrams the way, uh, you know, in this case, Spock yelled Khan. Uh, but so anyway, I'm very excited about this. I think it's, it's a fun way to spend the day, and I can't wait to start to see all the set leaks. Can they keep a, a, continue to keep a lid on this? Are we not going to see these characters in action until we get official photos or posters? I'm very, very excited. What's your favorite casting choice here? Who do you like the most? Who are you the most excited to see? Who are you the most surprised to see? Who do you think might be a mistake? And what do you think of announcing casting all at once like this? Do you think it's is fun or is it too much of too much uh, too much uh, all at once or have you gotten a casting brain freeze uh, write your thoughts down below so uh, enjoy the rest of your day and you can check out some more episodes right now